But you're absolutely correct. There is a gentleman on here. He is called, I've had him on my channel before as well, but he is, his, his name is Exodus 876. Okay. His intention is, his ideology is that people, before they decide to move onto the continent, they should have visited that place 10 times. And he said, that, that, that's what he says. He says, because if you go there 10 times, each time you're going to see something different that you didn't capture the first time. And then you can decide, okay, well, can I live with this? Can I not live with this? Is this doable? You, you're going to learn the ins and outs of basically the community. And so it, it was, it, it's interesting, but that's what he said. And that's going there 10 times and actually, and not living in like a hotel or yes. living in a, a Posh Airbnb, yeah, posh Airbnb. Yeah. In, in just a regular house where it's just regular people who mm -hmm. do regular things yes. so you can get in a better understanding of what that could look like and you know for me it's, I, I think it's, it's quite odd that people would want to you want to get up go and start a business but you've never even lived in the place like how how does how how does that work? How does it work? You don't even know how to go from point A to point B yet. Like, how does that work? You can't just jump up. It's going to be difficult if you're not collective. That's just it. That's that's just it. It's going to be difficult if you're not willing to get on the ground and be with the community. It's it's going to be very very. I've lived in several countries mm -hmm. on many continents and. Each of them are unique in their own way. And I can't say what works here is going to work there. And what I do here right. is what I can do there, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So people have to be uh, mindful and receptive. The biggest thing is being receptive because what I notice, and I've been to a lot of places, is that as Americans, we are the most pompous people I've ever met in my life. We are we are just heinous with that, and oh, yeah. we have got to stop. And sometimes, you know, we do it unconsciously. unconsciously. Just it's in us. It's in us yeah. because of how we've been reared in school. Exactly, and we're better than everybody. So we have to we're gonna have to check ourselves immediately with that. Or we're going to be up for failure. So I, I am glad that we're having this discussion because you're absolutely correct. You're ab and it's it's different when. Let, let's say if I'm talking about this versus somebody new has come on to the channel and they're talking about it to basically solidify what, what I've already said. It's like, she just, she don't know. I've been to 20 yeah. African nations. I know a whole lot, a whole lot. I mean, <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is, is I would suggest that anybody, if, if repatriating is something that you're, that's, that's what you want to do. That's what's in your heart. You need to really think long and hard about how can I go to the continent and just be there mm -hmm. and observe and learn because what's common sense in America is not common sense in Ghana, it's not common sense in Guinea, it's not common sense in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Common sense is relative to the place that you're in, and you know, certain things that are common sense in Ghana, it's not even a thought in america so but how would you know those things unless you're there so you know to all of the things that need there's so many layers layers, yeah. layers and layers of things that you need to actually learn so that you can have a successful business so that you do know how to even take a business meeting just taking a business meeting is totally different than how you would take a business meeting in America. 
Yes. Taking a, like, there's customs to it. You don't just, your first, you may have three or four meetings before you ever even talk about the business that you're supposed to be talking about. When as Americans, if I'm having a, if we're having a business meeting, hey, how you doing? How, you know, how's your family? We might go through that little bit for a little bit and then we straight the business. The business. But they want to have dreams. You got to eat. You got to do. It's well, a lot. A part bequeath of the social norm. Exactly. That's a part of that. Exactly. Um, it's going it, to, it definitely, it is, it is, it is going to be a learning curve. And Absolutely. people who, it's kind of like, I know you know this phrase when they say you're basically going to be able to tell the men from the boys because you're going to be able to see who can um, withstand, like you're saying, being able to go through all of these extra, these, these different meetings before you actually solidify a deal in what you're actually trying to do. Exactly. So, so I, I, I totally understand. But it's just, again, it's a part of the social, the, the social structure, the cultural um, norms of that particular place that you're in. So you're absolutely correct. Right. Well, little, I have, um, go ahead. Anecdotal story, just a little quick anecdotal story. Um, I had a, a, an, an associate who had a really good business um, idea and plan, came to Ghana, um, where I'm helping out with that. He's a young man. Um, he's traveled all around the world or whatever, but he wants to start his business in Ghana. Okay. The problem was, for one, that pompous American thing mm -hmm. that we have, that one thing, and two, understanding the social structure with men in Ghana. You mm -hmm. are let's say 32 years old, you're a small boy to these big men. And while you don't have to grovel or anything like that, there's a way that you have to interact with these men who are older than you and have, and are able to help you. Uh, it's yeah. just certain things that you can't say, you can't do, you, and you need to learn that. So I would tell him, look, Take um, one of the guys who worked with us. He was a very well put together young man. He under He's Ghanaian, so he knows how things work. I'm like, just take him and watch how he interact okay. with your men so that you can learn how you learn. Supposed to interact with these people. He thought that that was the most ridiculous thing he ever heard of in his life. And he doesn't have that, that business didn't go as far as it could have gone because he didn't want to listen. So what could have been a very good business, it ended up flopping because he just wouldn't learn the cultural norms when dealing with the, um, the what in Ghana, what they call the big man around yeah. him. He wanted to be a big man, but he didn't want to um, do what it took to get there. You know, um, seems, yes, pompous, um, hard-headed. <laughs> and again, you just wanted to do what you thought was okay because you did it that way in America. You know, I tell people all the time, stop trying to come over here and bring all this American stuff over here. You can't. You can't. One, there's a reason why you're deciding to leave. Exactly. Everybody has their own different reasons. And it's so... If you are deciding, okay, that you want to leave, but you don't want to give up any of the um, trinkets and your way of life there, you got three countries that you can go to. But see, the problem is people say that people say they say they don't want to go there. Well, why don't you want to go there? Because it's going to cost you more than it costs you at home. But then you want to complain about what you're lacking there. See, exactly. you get yourself on down south and you can have all that you have in America. Yep. You can have all that. But people want to play games about exactly. it. Then it becomes five other reasons why they don't want to go down there. Well, make up your mind. You make said you were going to be in this place because they had rolling power outages. Well, it's not an industrialized nation. 
Okay, their power grids don't look like American power grids. I can't anyway. <laughs> I got you three countries that can get you these power grids that you're looking for. You you want to go down there? Well, well, now it's something else. Well, my lineage cannot be traced down there. Well, which is it? Is it your lineage? Is it your lineage or the rolling power outages? I mean, I need you to stick with one. Or are you saying it's both? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. I have resigned myself to the idea and the fact that I don't have time for that. Yes. Because when you have situ, I have literally been in Conakry without power in a decent neighborhood for a week. Days. I was going to say no power for a week. And it wasn't, it was. It was simply that somebody's car hit the transformer or something uh, that my power line was on. The people across the street had a power, had power, but they wasn't on the same power yeah. line. Yeah. Was. So I had a whole week without. But you're power. alive. You alive? You survived that, girl. Gosh. What are you saying? With my water pressure, my water pressure was low because I stayed in the top of a building, on the third floor of a building. So my water pressure was low. I didn't have power, it was hot. My, of course, my electric fan, that's gonna go out within a few hours of, but to me, the, the it, was, it's, it wasn't so bad. I mean, it, I complained, I heat and hum and all of that, but I made it. And hell, I'm here to tell you about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So to wrap up, let me I have two more questions for you. Okay. The first one is um if you if, if there was someone who was saying they have got themselves, let's say in Ghana, and they're there and they are looking to align themselves with excuse me, some other local businesses, what would be good? What do you think would be good investment opportunities with with the local um, business folks on ground that the one should actually invest in? Um, there are many. Um, okay. It would depend. For me, as a farmer, um, I'm always looking at different farming opportunities. I really don't look at anything else. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, that's okay. It could be one side. There are. It could, it could help someone. There are many um, different farming opportunities like for one um i know one of my friends is looking at growing there's these grubs these little they like worms okay they call them grubs but um there's these grubs that people are growing um they're farming them for um to send out to to some of the like the asian nations um, even some of the local um, nations, I mean, local communities eat these things. Um, mm. There are other insect uh, farmings that you could look into um, that are good for feed for other animals. Uh, okay. It, okay. Wow. There are some local, I would tell anybody, if you want to start a business, even if it's a business that's already um, there's our, you already know there's a market for it. I would say get your prototype started first. Work on perfecting a prototype. Get that where you it just is it works like clock clockwork and it's duplicate. It's easily to duplicate and easily scalable. Um, okay. Start small. Okay. Whatever you're gonna do, start small. Um, and go from there because at the end of the day, business, most businesses fail. That's mm -hmm. just our gate. Most businesses fail. Mm -hmm. Um, the key is to hang, be able to hang in there. Yes. Um, and also not put yourself in a position where your, um, your output is more than your input uh, for too long. Um, and getting money, getting capital for 
businesses in Africa is really, really hard. Like it's really hard. They don't have investment um, banking and stuff like that on the continent. So you have to have your 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 own money. So mm -hmm. um, there's a video on my channel where I talk with um, a, a, a more experienced farmer. He's uh, actually one of my partners who, um, and he talks about different uh, businesses that you can go into. Um, the, the video is called uh, uh, Ghana, Opportunities in Ghana, I think is the name of the video. Okay, um, I, I I don't think I've seen that one. I have to catch it. I don't think yeah. I saw that. One. It's a it's a two part video, and we talk about several different opportunities that people can go into, and we break down the the cost factor. Like I start with like five hundred dollars up to like uh ten thousand dollars. Okay, or I have to go back and check that one out then. Surely, so, okay. Um. I think that if people would, people, we all come with this idea that, oh, I could just do this business. But you, it's so many things that you need to take into account. Who is your target market? Mm -hmm. Have you done any market research? What, how, how is it that you're going to make your business stand out from right. other businesses? Um, because for the most part, people think that certain things haven't been tried in Ghana, but they have. Mm -hmm. Or that certain things aren't in Ghana. And just because you don't see it don't mean it's not there yet. Of course. Um, of course. It just means that that business probably has their uh, their target market that they're dealing with. And that's all they worry about. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to do the same thing. And shoot, see a business and see what they're doing wrong <laughs> but you can do better do better than what they were yes. yes now let me okay and so the final question here is and i always ask this um Bequita of my guests okay. um coming from the diaspora what do you believe the biggest gift a diasporan can give on the continent oh yes <laughs> Well, I always say that the biggest gift that we can give the continent is the fact that for the last 400 years, we have learned these people. We know them in and out. We can see them coming from a mile away. And it seems like our siblings and cousins on the continent don't have that same little thing because they didn't they're not with them on a regular basis correct correct um so i think that us knowing how they are and knowing how to interact with them and knowing how to how to deal with them we bring something that is needed um so i said for i'll use for instance in the cocoa business you got ghana and the ivory coast are the two largest cocoa um uh countries in the world mm -hmm. hey pennies on the dollar i'm like we some of us need to get involved in that because yeah. me out the gate i'm gonna tell you i'm not selling nobody nothing i burn all this stuff before I sell, um, for what is for less than what is actually worth. So I think having that kind of, I think a more uh, aggressive way of doing things like, nah, we ain't, we ain't playing that. Mm -hmm. I think that we bring that kind of attitude, that kind of um, ability, um, and maybe we could, with what the Continentals um, what they know and what we know, we put those things together. We could dominate if we work together. Yes. You know, because they yeah. have know how, uh, they know the lay of the land on the continent. We know these people. So if we all work together, you know, you know, that is something that I say, excuse me, there is something that I say as well is that it togetherness we could do such great things, such great things together. 
Yep. And you know, that's why I don't like the the, the the divisive rhetoric because that's to, it's so low vibrational and everything. So you low. Know? Yes, yes. And so I really don't, I'm just not, I'm not here for it at all. Me either. Okay, not here for it. So I, I, I like that you said that. See, it's something about you. This is why I want to have this conversation. We're, we're agreeing us on so many different things. <laughs> yes. So I want to thank you for coming and you sharing me. your knowledge and just giving us something different that no one is really um, talking about in terms of moving this kind of business onto the continent and, and all of that good stuff. So I'm always here. I had a gentleman on my um, channel a few weeks ago and he was talking about uh, permaculture and everything. And he basically goes around and, and teaches, you know, farmers about permaculture and all of that. And this was Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. So just giving new new things for us to learn and all of that. So I want to thank you for joining us. And any final words you have? Yeah, the only thing I would like to say first, thank you for having me. Um, I I appreciate you having me on your, your channel. Um, and I just want to say to all of our people out there that anything is possible. Everything is possible. We just yeah. have to, you just got to dig your heels in and go for it. Like, yeah. there's nothing that, if, if you want to move to Africa and start a business, do it. Just take the right steps to do that. If you want to do yeah. it, yeah. do it. Just take the right steps to do it so that you don't cost yourself a whole lot of money and a whole lot of heartache and then end up going back to America bitter and hating everything Africa when in all in all actuality if you just would have taken your time you would have been able to do things much better. Totally. Totally. I, and that's, that's thank, you. thank you for thank you for having me again. Yes. And everyone please go to her channel and check out some of the great interviews that she has because it's a breadth of knowledge there. A breadth of knowledge. Thank you. Okay. So and Lizabitty is out. All right.